Dan Starlight's Drama Mama theme song because we're about to do some Drama Mama. So here we go. Listen up. Enjoy it. I don't have all the props yet, but we will in the future. So let's do it. <laughs> bottom of the drama. This is the full one. You know it's the full one. We're gonna investigate. We got our notepad on hand. We got our pen on hand. We got our coffee. We're ready to dive deep on the drama. That's what we aim for here, Vermin. We love that indie video game bops. That was the one and only Dan Starlight. Thank you so much, Dan Starlight, for that incredible theme. It has absolutely set the mood for some drama. So what are we talking about today? Well, as it turns out, our dear friend Destiny has gotten himself involved in some further drama. I know, surprise, right? Destiny? Drama? No, no, it can't be. It is. It is, I tell you. So what's the drama this time? Well, have you ever heard of an organization called the DSA? Does anybody know the DSA? Does anybody know what the DSA is? Anybody here? If you know what the DSA, if, you have, if, you, if you're not familiar with what the DSA is, the DSA is the Democratic Socialists of America. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Democratic Socialists of America is a caucus. What that means is that they're not technically like a political party that's independent from the Democrats. They're a part of the Democratic Party and they organize within the Democratic Party to push forward socialist candidates within the Democratic Party. Pretty cool. Um, some people don't agree with this tactic. I think it's perfectly fine. Um, I think it's good. Um, maybe not the most effective, but certainly a part of the push forward for socialists in America. Um, so yeah, um, they are they are a caucus, and as a caucus, what they tend to do is they tend to organize volunteers into um, canvassing, into outreach, into various community services, into vote registration, into voter turnout, all kinds of things like that. Um, and right now, there is a big struggle in Georgia. Now, for those of you who don't know, the last day, let me just get make sure I got the date correct here. The last day, today as actually the last day that you are able to register to vote in the Georgia runoff election. So if you are in my audience and you happen to live in Georgia and you're not registered to vote, please stop watching my stream right now. Go register to vote because you need to be able to vote in the, the runoff. The runoff is incredibly important. Let me tell you why. Thank you. Thank you very much. Big hugs from a French viewer. Yay! High five to my French viewers. Thank you, Space Montaigne. I appreciate that. Um, so here's the deal. Georgia is going into a runoff. So what that means is that candidate the candidates did not have enough votes to win their election. So they have to do a special election and the next, the, the candidates will essentially, it, it's kind of complicated, but basically there's going to be a second vote. Now this is important because if both Democratic candidates, oh yeah, there's the, there's the link. Uh, if, uh, hey Max, can you post this link? If you're actually, I'll just post it right now into YouTube chat, YouTube chat. Those of you, if any of you are in Georgia and you, and you haven't registered to vote, please stop watching my stream and go register to vote. If you can, it would be really important. Okay? It's more important than my stream. I promise you. It actually is. And let me explain why. There are two Democratic candidates in Georgia. Reverend Warnock. Thank you. Pardon me. I have nothing to say. You're perfectly good, Hyun. Thank you so much for the $5 donation. Deeply appreciated. So, Reverend Warnock and John Ossoff. Yeah, famed radical liberal Reverend Warnock. 
Both of these candidates are Democratic candidates challenging Republican incumbents. Um, one of them is uh, Kelly Loeffler. Are you familiar with Kelly Loeffler? Kelly Loeffler is the lady who we talked about earlier this year, the COVID grifter. She's the one who had inside information that COVID was spreading and she chose not to take action, but instead to st sell her stocks in certain companies. No joke and buy stocks in medical companies. I'm not kidding you. This is actual publicly available information that Kelly Loeffler did this and managed to avoid getting in trouble for it. That's right. The Georgia Republican re representative, sorry, rep representative, no, or senator. Is it senator? I can't remember. Fuck, fuck, fuck me. Loeffler, Loeffler, Leffler? Is it Leffler? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, senator, sorry. Um, senator sold out her stocks in certain companies and bought medical stocks in order to profit off of inside information they had about COVID. And then she went on to vote against support for people, against support for her own people, her own voters. So she's literally a plague profiteer. And she's going up against Reverend Warnock, a Democratic candidate with socialist leanings. Not, not a socialist, but socialist leanings. The other person, Purdue, Loeffler. That's what I thought, Loeffler. Um, the other person who's running is a guy by the name of Purdue. He's running against John Ossoff. Now, John Off, uh, sorry, John Ossoff, I'm not super impressed with. But nonetheless, he's significantly better than his incredibly corrupt opponent. Purdue is a, yeah, yeah, is he is he a member of the Purdue family? He probably is. I would imagine that he's a member of the Purdue family. Um, but Purdue is a giant flaming piece of trash. So even though I don't really think particularly highly of of Ossoff, um, I think he's pretty neolib. He doesn't support any of the policies we really stand for. He's a, a far cry from his opponent. So, um, so... Purdue is a Purdue? I think he might be. I don't know. I don't know if he's related to the Purdue Pharma um, family. David Purdue, is he? Let's find out. That one I didn't I didn't look up that particular factoid. Let's find out. Let's find out live if he is. David Alfred Purdue is an American businessman and politician. Let's see. After 12 years as a management consultant, he was a senior vice president for Reebok, then went to Pillotex, a textile company. And then he is that was then the CEO of Dollar General, huh? Interesting. Sonny Purdue is his cousin. Secretary of Agriculture. Agriculture guy, yeah. So he's got friends in high places, but I don't know if he's. Let's see, is he? I'm still a destiny simp despite his cringy anti-left shit but love your content. content. That's fine, Telecat. You can be a fan of Destiny. I know a lot of people like it. Oh, yeah, Dollar General's terrible. Let me just take a look if he's got any connections to the uh, to the family. It doesn't look like he has any... It's hard for me. I don't think he does. I don't think he has any connections any to the Purdue drug family. We love you, Telecat. We don't hate on people for being Destiny fans here. Destiny can be great. I like some of Destiny's stuff. I like a lot of Destiny's stuff, to be completely honest. So... The reason why all of this is important is because this runoff election will decide the very delicate balance of power in the Senate, okay? So follow me for just a second. Right now, the Republicans have control of the Senate, which means Mitch McConnell gets to decide everything in the Senate, which is why we've been in gridlock, which is why we haven't received any aid, despite the fact that the economy is literally imploding. Um... We haven't received it because that evil motherfucker, Mitch McConnell, is still in control of the Senate. That won't be the case if Ossoff and Warnock win in Georgia. They will lose majority control. And what that means is it will be a tie. And as we all should know, ties are broken by the vice president, who is a Democrat. So you see, it's a little complicated and boring politics, but what this means is the Republicans will have control of none of government. 
except for the judiciary, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The Republicans will not have control of the House, they will not have control of the executive branch, and they will not have control of the Senate anymore. That is huge. And that is why at the end of the day, at the end of the day, hey, Kossith, I can see your test. At the end of the day, it is really important that we win the Georgia runoff elections. So how does this have anything to do with the drama? Well, as it turns out, a streamer we all know named Destiny has decided to put his feet on the ground and send some of his fans and, and, and also go himself to Georgia where he can help campaign for Ossoff and Warnock and canvas for them, which is pretty cool, right? That's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool when you go out Actually, we can get a 52-50 if we win the election because we can make D.C. a state. That is also a possibility. More, It's more than most online folks do. But there are some considerations and we need to keep things. Remember, in the Drama Mama segments, we're going to try and keep our thinking hat on and, and be as clear-minded clear as we can until the very end when I give my silly take. Hey, Gambino, good to see you. It's cool of destiny to be willing to organize canvassers, okay? So, Destiny is organizing canvassers. The DSA wants Warnock and Ossoff to win because that's in their interest. So you'd think, well, hey, their interests align, right? They should work together. But the DSA refused to work with Destiny. Why? Why? Now, if you've been on Twitter at all, you've probably seen... A lot of this you've probably seen like quite a lot of people talking about this um some people very very mad um some people really really not mad some people going really far and saying all kinds of stuff um yeah if you're afraid of covid you can text or call bank both of those things are very valuable the fact of the matter is this is going to be a very tight race and donald trump is is further making it dangerous because Donald Trump is refusing to support these candidates unless they back his conspiracy theory. Call banking can be stressful, but it's not necessarily stressful. And some people are really good at making calls. So if you're good at that and you want to do praxis, this is an opportunity where all of the tracks have been laid for you. All you have to do is volunteer. They'll give you everything you need to do. That's so stupid. Like no matter whether they dislike each other, they can both help. Well, there's a little bit more to it. Now, listen, if you got social anxiety, don't worry about it, okay? You do what you can do. That's the secret. We all do what we can. And of course, it's very good for us to challenge ourselves to do more. You know, it's always a good thing to challenge yourself to strive harder. But if you can't do it, it's okay for you to not do that. You're not a bad person because you decide that, hey, I can't handle this type of thing at the moment. Survival has to come first. That's just a reality. That's just how it goes. So, the drama. DSA has refused to work with Destiny. Destiny has a couple hundred people in his organization that he wants to direct into canvassing. That seems a little weird, but let's try to get to the bottom of it and let's try to make a good, um, you know, reading of it to the best to the best of our ability. With this, we must go to a fancy place called Twitter. All right, are you all ready for some Twitter Twitter drama diving? I am. I am. It is time for a drama mama investigation. So, there's been a lot of response. Here we go. This was the first one that I personally saw, okay? So, we're going to start with this one first. This is what I saw first, okay? Investigation begin. The dipshits at Metro ATL DSA are fucking petty and stupid for not wanting to work with gays within destiny's friend to canvas for liberal candidates it's petty online bullshit and it should be discouraged at your chapter dsa work is a wide tent grow up then we have oh hey look it's vosh disappointing good work is being done there we have Mythaldu, eh? I know Mythaldu. The saddest part is that in the situation that's life or death directly for many Americans and indirectly for the entire world, Metro ATL DSA can, as far as I can tell, not be even arsed to post an explanation for them declining to organize canvassing with his volunteers. Well, this is changing. This is going to change. They're going to get it. You suck. 
We get it. This shtick is tired as shit. This unoriginal ass baiting whack nonsense surely can't be worth the well-deserved vitriol you magnetize. As far as I know, this person is an organizer. If I, yeah, I think this is, yes, Lil, Lil SD, this person is an organizer who organized a lot of the protests in, in Portland. This person has literally been on the ground in Portland for months, like basically fighting a war against like the feds, more or less. That's not a great way to put it. That's actually a terrible way to put it. But uh, against Donald Trump's black bagging assholes. So a real, real organizer who real do does really good things. Resisting absolute, absolute tyranny. Which is what it is. That is what Donald Trump's feds have been doing. The Israeli government is saying there's a galactic federation of aliens watching humanity. Don't, you got to tell that to Posadas John. Lamau, they really did. DSA ditch destiny. Wait a minute. This is a, this is a thing from destiny. Let's see what destiny has to say about it. Let's see what destiny has to say. Was here last time it's going to be here. Uh, not all, but it's like half Exactly. Wait, how many people did you have last time? Um, around 150. I didn't do as much advertising for this one as I should have done. Yeah, Little SD is oh, doing good not? work. Just so we all know. It's not just some rando online. I kind of fucked my whole day yesterday. And then um, we were supposed to coordinate more with the DSA people, but but fucking annoying dipshit socialist losers. We had wait, fucked on. wait, what are you talking about? Dipshit socialist losers. Some people from the DSA approached me. They seemed really excited to work with me. And so I traded contact information. So Doug was coordinating with them a lot over the last I don't know weeks. why he's not yeah. wearing a mask. And since a lot of them are terminally online, white as fuck suburban rich. White as fuck suburban rich kids. Okay, so he's breaking out all of this, all of the fucking stereotypes here. Which dipshit kids, a lot of them voted down working with us because they thought that I was like an evil person. So voted down all that working time with them. Into, like working with that group of people was totally fucking wasted. Wait, they just didn't want to do it anymore, kind yeah, of? I think I'm like a right winger racist. Wait, really? Okay. Oh, and that was like, kind of like the whole point to like why this sounded like a great idea was because they could help you with it? Well, no, it was going to be a part of it, but like, it just, so ended up, we ended up wasting a lot of time like coordinating with a group. Because when they put it to a vote, they decided they didn't want to work with us. Now. What? That's so weird. Hope this is where Wait, why do the people think that you're. Because they're communists and I'm not a communist. Wait, really? Because they're communists and I'm not a communist. Really? Okay. Yeah. Is everyone really a communist? Everybody online and white is a communist. Yeah. White? <laughs> okay. And white? It's like the cool thing to be now. It's like the sexy thing to be. Trendy. It's the sexy thing to be. True! It is uh, sexy! Okay. Interesting. It is sexy well, to give a shit about the world. To show other people like, how cool you are, rather than like actually giving a fuck about any of the issues. No. Okay, now... Sorry. Right. Wait. We wait. You don't think Hassan cares about? Absolutely not. Okay. Okay. It, it, being trans is also sexy, yes. What makes you think that? Um, for a variety of reasons. <laughs> you want to tell? I mean, there's a lot of people here that's like, what the fuck? They've never heard you talk about this. Oh, hey, the guy. This is about the DSA stuff. Yes, it is. Okay, so that was Destiny's yeah, response. He seems very uh -huh. frustrated about it. Um, damn, that was a lot of stuff to talk about. Okay, so... Destiny believes that the DSA refuses to work with him because he's not a socialist, because he's not a communist, and they hate anyone who's not a communist, and they think anyone who's not a communist is a racist. D does that sound does that sound like a fair analysis of what he said in that video? Which, keep in mind, he knew was being streamed. He said that to a lot of people. Um, yeah, right. They think, they say they think Destiny is a racist. Um, all kinds of things like that. That's what Destiny believes. So that seems like a fair summary of what Destiny's position on it. Um, is it a vote of all the DSA members of that chapter? I don't know. I don't know anything about that. We're But remember, we're going to talk to the DSA members soon. So don't worry. We will be talking to the per one of the people deeply involved in this who can explain the entire process to us. Don't worry. We got to get our stuff out first. Okay? We'll talk about the Israel stuff after if we have time. Okay? We will. Don't worry. It's a lack of political intelligence that's self-defeating. As you can see, there's a lot of people here. Are you in mad DSA? Did you organize votes for this canvas? Seems like you're mad at your own ability to organize. A leftist infighting is when you don't want to be associated with the guy who voiced support for a violent white supremacist militia. I don't know who De Destiny is, but it sounds like Metro Atlanta DSA did the right thing here. Had they decided to canvas for these asshats... Oh yeah, I gotta show this. For these asshats, I would have had to seriously re reconsider my status as a member of DSA. Okay. 
in my experience, uh, and Matt, Matt L. DSA is probably similar. For local DSAs to vote in order to canvas for or back a particular politician, that politician has to believe in a base minimum of policies that, won't, that they won't negotiate on. Ma Medicare for all, housing justice. If not, no support is given. This is how caucuses work. Wait, can you see the screen now? You should be able to. Um, this is how caucuses work. This is how they work. When you have a caucus, the point is that you leverage power to win certain support. You know what I mean? That's the whole point. The point is that you get a whole bunch of voters together who say, we won't vote for your candidate unless you meet our demands. That is the point of a caucus. That's why they do the things that they do. So many lefties have to shoot themselves in the foot for the sake of imagined purity. Hold up. We're going to get there. The reason you joined DSA, here's another, here's another comment. Uh, the reason you joined DSA is because candidates like Ossoff are barriers to more progressive socialist agendas. He said he would not support any of the policies advocated for by the DSA. Therefore, if I was a dues paying member of ATL DSA, I'd be pissed off. Okay. So we got a lot of takes here. We got a lot of takes here. A lot of different people saying a lot of different things. Okay. We've got a little bit more. We've got a little bit more. Okay. This is the second thread that I thought that I saw. And this one is whoops, Cheeky Nando. Thread, I'm the Metro ATL DSA guy that dropped Destiny and allegedly sabotaged his whole canvassing operation. Here's why that is actually bullshit. Let's let's hear the chat here. Saturday, November 28th. Destiny staffer joins a wide DSA Discord. He asks to organize an event for Friday, December 5th. He disregards basic social distancing practices and wants to organize this event during finals week. He calls a YDSA officer and pitches it. Okay. Hi, I'm the political organizer behind Dent Destiny's Atlanta GOTV work. Uh, blank can vouch for me. I would like to coordinate an event this coming Friday with YDSA, preferably at a college. Welcome. Also, what kind of event were you planning? Whatever event will get the most students to show up on campus, okay? Panel with professors, activists, etc. with Destiny as the host, talking about organizing, impromptu smash tournament, bingo, etc. I don't care. Okay, so they're going a little loose here. They're going a little loose right here is what we're seeing. They don't really have a plan for what they want to do on campus. They just want to put something together, which is fine, but it's not exactly super, super organized. If a YDSA member can book the space and distribute the message through their social channels, we will through ours. In theory, sponsor a local musician, get some food on us, and then canvassing sign up for the next day. Most students have gone home for the holidays and finals are coming up this week just for an FYI. Hmm. To be honest, a lot of those possibilities you listed do not sound social distance or quarantine friendly. The school might not have good guidelines in place, but we should be smart regardless. Your goal here is to get people for canvassing though, right? I'm confident if we do it outside, we can do it in a responsible way. The goal is to recruit, recruit people to canvas. Okay. So this is pretty mild, right? They, the, the, the organizer brought up some genuine concerns. I think we can all agree that COVID concerns at the highest point that we've had of COVID is very well founded. Also, the fact that finals and students are home for the holidays is also a huge concern. Just so you know, most people leave schools for the holidays. Most people do not stay on campus for the holidays. So your numbers are going to be significantly lower. These are both, in my opinion, very, very good responses. These are like good critiques. These are genuine good critiques as far as I can tell. Monday, November 30th. Why DSA officers decide to not have an event? Primarily because it's finals week. Finals week is really important. For those of you um, in chat who've not been to college, finals week is when all of the tests are. Students are incredibly stressed. In fact, students are usually so stressed during finals week that it's um, it's normal for, if, for specific events to be planned, like dog petting um, and primal scream, which I've participated in. Uh, primal scream is they you go out in the yard and they have a group of people and you all get together and you scream at the same time to get your frustration out. It's literally like a, 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 like a, a thing. Um, pet therapy happens. Yeah, like finals week is really fucking hard. 
I have nightmares about finals week. I graduated from college more than a decade ago. Many people do. It's incredibly, it, like the way that finals are done is in, unbelievably stressful. It's incredibly stressful. And the fact of the matter is people don't do shit during finals week. So this, again, as far as I can tell, um, I believe Sylvia has literally told me that, yes, it is indeed finals week um, at, at, the, at schools in Georgia. So as far as I can tell, this is a completely valid a completely valid reason to not have an event. Tuesday, December 1st, an officer tells him they're not interested. He presses them about working with Metro ATL DSA or other YDSAs, so they give him my phone number because I'm a YDSA coordinator. Wednesday, December 2, Destiny staffer calls me. I have no idea who Destiny is. He says they have a ton of signups, but no voter data or canvassing app yet, and they desperately need help. Okay, so they don't have a whole lot of on-the-ground organization set up quite yet. They ask the new GA project for help, but were rejected. He invites me to get drinks with him and Destiny. I say that I'm social distancing and decline. I invite them to send people to our already planned canvas on Saturday, December 5th. He asks if Destiny can speak and if they can do their own events with our van. I'd say I need to check with leadership first. Okay, so they're asking a lot. They want a guy that that that, that DSA is not familiar with. I know, shocker, normies online, despite Destiny constantly saying that, that online people have no idea what normies are like, as it turns out, Destiny is also terminally online and thinks that everyone knows who he is. So, uh, yeah, that seems a little... A little bit yeah it seems like they may have miscalculated that a little bit but all right let's give them the the benefit of the doubt i understand i can understand messing up on that little cognitive bias i'd say i'd need to check with leadership i ask a few members who is destiny those members said that he sucks i google destiny streamer for the first time and i see him call for the murder of blm protesters i don't bother with checking in with other officers or our runoffs committee. There you go. This, and now, of course, we could say this person is lying, but I don't think we have any reason to believe this person is li lying. They look like they're very much involved. Um, they look like they're very much involved in real world politics and they might not be online very much. This particular clip is very bad. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this. I call back two hours later. I politely say I think the chapter won't be interested in co-hosting events with Destiny, but they're welcome to send volunteers to our public events. So, so now look at this. They're willing to work with them, just not openly associate with Destiny or have Destiny speak at their events. They're more than happy to have the volunteers get involved. That's good, right? This is good. I recommend contacting the Ossoff Warnock campaigns about setting up their own events. He says, okay. So basically nothing happened. We didn't dramatically sabotage their plans, lead them on, or derail a couple of weeks of organizing like Destiny said. Van is expensive as fuck. They're just pissed that they can't co-opt our volunteer organized events. This dude sucks. Okay. If you want change, don't get mad, get organized. Join Democratic Socialists in our struggle to overthrow. So here's the plug. Solidarity and good luck. What is van? I think they meant literally they're with our van. Is that a volunteer network? I thought they meant literally a van. What's a van? Is that a volunteer network? Let's find out. Yes. It's yes, it's a voter diet. Yeah, it's a voter voter database. Basically, it lets them find out who they can go talk to. Now, I hate to say it, Destiny would be able to get a lot more support for that movement no matter how shitty his takes are. That's not necessarily true. That's not necessarily true. So, we got to get through all of it, and then I'll give my take. Yeah, I thought it was at first, but now I realize that was silly, and they meant the um, they meant the app. Good job, Brit Mouse. It's a vote. Uh, VAN is, uh, as far as I can tell, a like voter database that lets you know where to go to. Um, there might be. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll jump to conclusions later. All right? So let's watch this clip. For everyone who doesn't know of this clip, this, to be fair, is somewhat out of context. This conversation was much longer 
But this is the clip that a lot of people know of. This is the clip that Destiny has been very angry about. Let's just watch the clip. We're safe to watch it here on YouTube, so let's give it a watch. This is the infamous clip. Let's watch it. The rioting needs to fucking stop. And if that means, like, white redneck fucking militia dudes out there mowing down dipshit protesters that think that they could torch buildings at 10 p.m., then at this point, they have my fucking blessing. Because holy shit, this fucking shit needs to stop. It needed to stop a long time ago. Like, holy you fuck. The rioting needs to fucking stop. Thank you, guys. And if that means, like, white redneck fucking militia dudes out there mowing down dipshit protesters that think that they could torch buildings at 10 True, p.m., Kate then Ash. at this point, they have my fucking blessing. Because holy shit, this fucking shit needs to stop. It needed to stop a long time ago. Like, holy you, you fuck. So, this is a conversation, by the way, with MX Vivian Wolf. You might know who MX Vivian Wolf is. We've had them on here multiple times. Is this what we call pulling a Vosh? Listen, Vosh's wasn't even this bad. This is pretty bad. Now, let me just, let me just, let me just, there's not real, like, okay. Friend of, friend, friend of the stream, indeed. Okay, so let's talk. I know, I need to activate Windows. I know, I'll do it, I'll do it, Kossith. I know, I'll do it. I'm just lazy, okay? So here's the thing. Let's talk about this a little bit. This take is phenomenally stupid. Phenomenally stupid, okay? I know it's out of context. It makes me so uncomfortable that Vivian got some online p popularity with her past behavior towards Vosh, but I guess there's a lot of folks like that out there. Listen, um, Vermin, for all that I can say, I don't, I can't speak to like, I don't remember all of the drama that was there. All I can say is that Vivian has grown a lot as a person over the, over the last like year and a half. And as far as I know, doesn't hold any like personal bad blood against Vosh. I don't know. I can't speak, but I might be able to facilitate someone talking if that was interested. I know there's been some bad blood between the two of them. I've had a lot of conversations with Vivian Wolf. I personally get along well with Vivian Wolf, but I understand. I completely can understand that. I just, I want people to understand that, like, I don't really know. I don't entirely understand the bad blood, but that's okay. It's, it's okay for people that I'm mutually connected to to not like each other. That happens sometimes, and I just want you to know. That's fair, Vermin Hands. That's perfectly fair. And I can understand. There's been some real spice online. Vivian is a very, very spicy person. I don't know how far it went, um, but that's neither here nor there for right now. And I respect your willingness to to not bridge those. Can we stop with the drama for five gosh darn minutes? No, Rakasan, this is a drama segment. This is a drama segment. We gotta do the drama. All right, we have to. It's part of it's part of our calling. Okay. Okay. So the take. Oh, okay, here, I'll play the... Look, 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 I'll play the take one more time. All right, let's do this. The rioting needs to fucking stop. And if that means, like, white redneck fucking militia dudes out there mowing down dipshit protesters that think that they could torch buildings at 10 p.m., then at this point, they have my fucking blessing. Because holy shit, this fucking shit needs to stop. It needed to stop a long time ago. Like, holy you, you fuck. Think... So, again, a very... Very spicy take. And I repeat again, for everyone watching right now, this is not the full context. We are watching this clip because this is the clip that the DSA members came off, came across on right away. Now, it's very hard, in my opinion, it's kind of hard to justify that clip with context. That seems really difficult. However, I do recognize that clips can be very dishonest. Clips can be misleading. So if you're interested in discovering more about the clip that goes beyond this drama that we're talking about right now, I highly recommend looking up the stream in which Destiny and Vivian Wolf talk about this particular issue. Everyone has a lot of bad, bad ones. There we go. You're unmuted. You're freed. This particular take is what I would call radioactive, okay? And let me explain what I mean when I say radioactive. When I say radioactive, that means that, uh, that means that no one can even come near it without also becoming contaminated. 
Radioactive, radioactive. That one. Da na 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 na. Da na 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 na. But it's radioactive. No one can touch it without getting radioactive gunk all over them and potentially becoming radioactively sick themselves. It's bad. It's very bad. Now, whether you agree that it was clipped out of context, whether you agree um, that it is as bad as people have made it out to be does not matter. Having said this thing at all on a stream that you're broadcasting live to a lot of people, to a lot of people, there were probably, I mean, let me see if I can get a, I don't know. I don't even know. We could try and find out. I don't know that we need to go that deep on it. A lot of people watch Destiny's streams. Um, it's very difficult to be able to, I mean, like, we're at a distance right now from the take, so probably not going to be radioactive in and of ourselves. Um, but it is a radioactive take, especially if people search your name on Google and this is the first thing that they see. Now, you might think, you might think, oh, but... There's all kinds of shit that you can Google. We shouldn't use Google as the basis for who we decide to coalition build with. And you'd be right to a degree. But there's another consideration that you all have to be thinking about that everyone who's thinking about this needs to touch, which is that if the DSA member Googles it and that's the first thing that they come up with, so can the Republicans. So can the Republicans. And that is a no-go. You cannot. It is absolutely impossible for you as a democratic socialist of America hoping to communicate with lots of people to vote for your candidates. You cannot have it be possible for the opposition to do oppo research, which is what it's called, have you ever heard of the term oppo research? It means opposition research. Every political party, every political person in the world does this. They go through and they try to find any dirt on their opponent that they can possibly do, that they can possibly find. This is like oppo research gold. You find this, you find out, hey, did you know? Here, let me just do an impression of a Republican. Ready? Here's my impression. Hey, did you know that Reverend Warnock has an anti-BLM activist who advocates for white nationalists killing protesters? Did you know that? There's the ad. This ad brought to you by, by Kelly Loeffler, Campaign for Senate. There you go. Fucked. Absolutely fucked. And a 10-second clip that's already been pre-cut, it's the easiest oppo you could possibly find. So incredibly bad. It is so radioactive, I can't even tell you. And this is why I want to urge my fellow lefties who are really pissed off about Destiny not having DSA work with him to take a, take a step back, turn off the online brain for a second and realize that if the DSA member who's never heard of Destiny and is open, clearly open to working with him, can find this in 10 seconds from a Google search, the opposition will absolutely do that and absolutely exploit it. And that is too much of a risk. So for all of these people, all of these Destiny fans and, and other people who are saying, oh, the DSA is shit for doing this. They're shit for brain socialists who don't know how to coalition build. I'm sorry, but that is just simply not a fair analysis. It really is not. Because you cannot imagine, like, this, having this clip out there and easily available, even if it's out of context, you can't explain it's out of context when Republicans put it in an ad that tanks your candidate. You can't do that. You don't get the opportunity. I'm sorry, but you don't get to do that. It's a harsh reality of politics. And destiny of all people should understand this. So when we're talking about praxis, that is way too much of a liability for any front forward facing organization, especially one on a college campus to take a risk on. Or is this not, am I making sense? Does anybody have any like questions about that or, or, or disagreements with that? 
As much as I like Vosh, the Destiny thing is one thing I've always disagreed on. Maybe it's the fact, but I didn't watch him in the past. But very recently, uh, if he used to be a cool person, he doesn't seem to be one anymore. Well, that's the thing. Um, stream acts in a way that makes him unassociated, and the orgs are the ones who don't understand coalition building. Yeah, okay. So do you see what I'm saying? The take, this take that we just watched right here is so radioactive. This is so radioactive, it could kill, it could, it could do more harm. It could do more harm than a hundred volunteers could do good. That's just a fact, especially if it's easily accessible. Now, if this clip wasn't easy to find, if nobody could go verify this easily, but it's the, it's real early on Google. It's really right up there. For DSA, I understand, but for the political ad take, it doesn't change anything because Destiny already plans to organize canvassing for that candidate regardless of the DSA support. Yes, but if he's doing it independently, they don't have to claim any association. They can disavow them all that they want. They can say, we don't know who this guy is. He's just a random fucking canvasser. Do you see what I mean? And that's the other thing to consider in all of this. Canvassers are doing very good work, but there are a lot of people who canvass. There are professional canvassers. The Democratic Party hires people to canvass. Canvassing is very common. And while I agree that it, while I 100% agree that it is a good thing for Destiny to attempt to organize people to go canvass, to make a push for this, it is a good thing. It's not like the most world-changing action that anyone has ever taken, which I do think that some people who are very associated with Destiny and very proud of him and whatnot are kind of taking it that way. They're kind of saying, like, Destiny is doing real world politics. Well, but the fact of the matter is there's thousands of canvassers who do this all the time and don't get any heroic singing. They don't get any praise for it. So while it is a good thing, an undeniably cool thing that Destiny is involving himself, his ego is clearly getting in the way. And for all of the shit that he says about the DSA being socialist idiots, being communist, white suburbanite, blah, 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 which that's not making it any easier for them to work with him, to be fair. For all of that, at the end of the day, from the DSA's perspective, they're losing like maybe a hundred potential canvassers versus giving a nuclear bomb of pre-prepared radioactive hot take to the Republicans. Do you see do you see what I'm saying there? Does that make sense? This is why we are doing the drama mama. Because I think it's important to bring these things in. Really important in all of this drama. From the DSA's perspective, they have to choose do we bring on officially and allow him to speak in public a guy who's so radioactive that the first Google result associates him with this really bad take that's just really hard to explain? It is really hard to explain that take. Or do we take the do we take the hit of a hundred canvassers and don't deal with the radioactivity? See what I mean? I just think he was, look, for the record, I think he was being really careless, and I get it. Yeah, exa exactly, exactly, goddess trans girl. DSA is surging in popularity, and they need to guard their rise. Absolutely. Destiny of all people should understand this. This is what real politics is, and I know that people don't like it. Real politics is disgusting. It's horrible. It's cutthroat and sometimes you have to tell people to fuck off and they have to know in their head I know you're telling me to fuck off but we're working together under the table that's just a reality of politics Republicans do this all the time their entire strategy is built off of this like seriously like think about how the Republicans constantly court the votes of white nationalists and Nazis and then publicly disavow them yeah, it's not it's real politique. It is. It's cutthroat and it's and it's it's dirty, but it's a fact. If Destiny knew what was right, he would say, "Okay, sorry DSA, we're going to keep going with our own thing. You don't have to have any involvement with my radioactive ass." I get it. He can still do good. He can still bring those 100 people to help. Well, yes. 
Yes, Zanzi, I agree. Community organizes is based on building relationships, and Destiny doesn't seem interested in doing much of that. I do agree with that. But we're not ready for the full hot takes, yes, because there's more. The drama isn't even close to done. I know, right? You're like, oh shit, how could it get more dramatic than this? It does. Are you ready? Are you ready? We don't work with Nazis. We gonna have to pass on that one. Official Metro Atlanta DSA account. Oof. Oof. Oh boy. Oh. Oh boy. Oh. DSA. My goodness, what the fuck is going on? I told you. I told you. I told you. And we have a lot of response here. You know, we got all these. And then we have online LARPers molding in the comments. I mean, that's fair. I do agree, Somniostatic. But here we go. We have a lot of people here. How did the DSA get ratioed? Well, because with all due respect, with all due respect, Destiny has a lot of fans and they're very online. So, I mean, look at this. We've got everybody jumping on this beyond parody. I was actually interested in my local DSA until I read this shit. Look, this is fucking stupid as shit. This is actually one of the stupidest responses in this entire thread, and I'll tell you why. Th this one, I want to save this one for later, actually. I mean, look at these. There's just so much. One of the few online figures that would push back on far-right rhetoric. Okay, so, as you can see, things are pretty spicy. Uh, Goddess Trans Girl, the reason why I don't stream in 1080p is because it overheats my camera. So, for now, we're stuck at 720. But in the future, brilliant 1080p. In the future, someday, someday, when we keep growing. Do you think people in DSA organizations should be more online aware or maybe is that a part of their strength? Politics streaming is getting huge, especially for the left. I think they, I think that there needs to be a much stronger connection between online and offline organizing. Like, much stronger. But I don't blame people for not knowing. Yeah, just tape ice to it. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe there's something I can do. But right now, yeah. Right now, we... That's neither here nor there. I appreciate the concern, though. In the future. So, <clears throat> is Destiny, is it fair to call Destiny a Nazi? Wait, politics streaming is, is punditry. We need to understand that. It's nothing like organizing. I agree and I disagree, Zanzi. I'll talk about this afterwards. We'll, we'll get into this. Um, we'll get into that part. We'll get into that. Um, Calling him, we don't work with Nazis. We're going to have to pass on that one. Yeah, I know you do, Zanzi. Um, but this is really, really tough. This was, in my opinion, this seems like a big stretch, and it also seems pretty responsible, pretty irresponsible. Oh, yes, I have that one. I have this one, um, Gay Fesh, queued up. Well, I'll just even, I'll just borrow this one, because then I don't even have to go to my bookmarks. I have this one queued up as well. There's a lot of lot of drama still to get through. We got plenty of time, though. We don't work with Nazis. We're going to have to pass on that one. A Nazi wouldn't canvas for a Democratic candidate. This, in my opinion, is really careless. And I don't know who made this one. Um, but I don't think that there's anything that says that. With that said, with that said, let me offer you... Let me offer you someone who need to be fired made that one. Maybe. But hold on a second. Just for the sake of fairness, I think that's a stupid and risky tweet to make. However, however, 
Remember what I said about real politics. Real politics is dirty as fuck. It's always dirty. What if destiny is committed to continuing the it's Machiavellian? It is. It's just a fact. I'm sorry, but it's real that's reality. If that's the case, destiny should be willing to be the one who buries this underground, knowing that the DSA has a much bigger influence than he currently has, and they have more potential for actual change than him and his small organization. Although his organization can bring change, if Destiny was in the political mind and not in the internet personality mind, the dunk guy mind, the ego mind, Destiny, in my opinion, should be able to acknowledge, okay, so some random DSA chapter called me a Nazi. Who fucking cares? I get it. They can't associate with me, and they want to make their base sh clear that they don't sign off on this take that's my number one Google um, served up response. Do you see where I'm coming from? Do you see where I'm coming from on this? I do believe that the DSA would have been smarter to not make this tweet at all and just let it go silently. However, Destiny would also have been smarter. No. Um, but uh, Destiny would also have been smarter to just let it go. To just let it go. And Destiny's fans would also be smarter to just let it go. Take that, every, every normie. So this is just... He's too lefty hate brain. Oh, 100% vermin. 100%. But here's the thing. We all, as lefties online, have to have strategic politics on, as well. We need to recognize this. So people swarming the mentions of the DSA account and calling them fucking shit and saying shit like, like, um, like fucking what we saved here, this fucking, I was actually... Sorry, hold on. Let me just let me just show you this. I'm sorry. Look, listen. We don't even need to have the name in there, okay? I was actually interested in my local DSA until I read this shit. I was going to go. I went out to go um, canvassing, and I walked in, and I was like, excuse me, will you consider voting for John Ossoff and Reverend Warnock? Really? That's poggers. Yeah. Hell yeah. Coggers. Do you think that that is going to be able to sell well, to the normies, I believed in socialism until these, until these, until I saw a monka s take from the DSA online. Wow. D excuse me. Have you heard of Reverend Warnock? He's the most pog candidate that we have. They should have, but they don't behave. Yes. I know it hurts, but but still, come on, everybody. If people really believe, if people really believe that the Ossoff Warnock race is this motherfucking important. Oh, the voice. Oh, the vo the voice. Yeah, you're good. Listen, if people really believe, I know it peaks the mic. I'm sorry. I have to do better. Aw. Good night, Rakasan. I hope you have a good night. Um, I gotta fix my mic levels. It's okay. I'll fix. I'll fix it. Oh no, gender. Get a band aid on there. Listen, if people really believe that it's this important, I don't disavow my voice. I don't. Um, if if people really believe that this is as important as it is, get smart about your politics. Stop going online and being wow. This is unpog. Oh my God, Destiny is, is doing Praxis and you're not gonna, um, you're not gonna do it? That's a Keck W from me. And it's just, I, I, I just don't understand it. What are you, what are you trying to accomplish here? And it makes me wonder, it makes me wonder if Destiny and his fan base has any fucking clue what they're doing and any fucking clue about real politics. Because if you know anything about real politics, and Destiny, keep in mind, Destiny loves to call people terminally online white suburbanite socialists, Destiny himself being an incredibly wealthy streamer 
insulated with a fan base that praises him fervently and swarms anyone who disagrees with him. It seems a bit odd of me that if that's true, that he is willing to call everyone else that, that he's unwilling to recognize the absolute functional reason why the DSA would desperately need to disavow any involvement with somebody who has a take like that. You call my chat? Yes, I will. Oh, chat! You're my little pog champs! You gotta put a band-aid on there. Okay. 404 gender, what I want you to do, listen to me, okay? I'm not a doctor, but what I want you to do is go get some gauze and some gauze tape, okay? Wrap it around nice and tight. Put the gauze on it and wrap it around nice and tight so it puts pressure on it, all right? It'll be fine, I promise. I'm not disavowing the terminally online voice. Go for it. Send it Send it to Gayfesh. Yeah, put the fingy above your heart. All right? So this is the thing. Real political organizers know that 50 to 100 canvassers is not as valuable as not having a radioactive tape, a radioactive take easily available. Fucking exactly online left egos are so toxic for everything. Somniostatic, what the fuck? Thank you very much for the in the unfathomably generous $50. I don't deserve that, but thank you very, very much. That is a, that is pog champ. I can't believe it. Holy shit, $50. Oh, oh my God. That's going to push forward the left in America. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> static's gonna do a charger. That's like five vans. True. Listen, so I get it. I get there's frustration all about, but guess what? It's not over yet. It's still not over yet. The drama continues. Of course, it couldn't be over. Uh-oh. Wait a second. Whoa! Wait a second. Well, true. If you upgrade me to the bourgeois class, I will be the best tr class trader you've ever met. I promise you. That is a promise. I'll be the best class trader you've ever met, barring Engels himself. But that's... But if you can't get me to the bourgeois, it's fine. I'm fine with subsistence living. I seriously am. I will be... I will do whatever I can because I'm going to keep making content no matter what. I love making content. So there you go. Enough of that. Let's continue. It looks like Shu deleted this tweet. Does anybody, by, by any chance, does anyone have a snap of Shu's tweet? Does anybody have it? Because I didn't know it was deleted when I first started the segment. I didn't know that it was going to get deleted. Um, but way back it? Yeah, I could way back it. Let's try that. Let's try that real quick. Copy link location. Way back. It's this one. Here, I'll, I'll show you. It was the one that was quoted in here. Whoops. There we go. Let me get this. Copy link. I'm going to way back it real quick and we'll see. We'll see if I can find it. Is this the one? Or is this a real Reddit moment? Is that what we got going on here? Ah, yes. Here we go. Yeah, the one where everyone went, shoo. Okay, so it was saved. Okay, so somebody has it. It is here. Let's take a look at it. It's in the Wayback Machine. We're not done with the drama, but we'll get there. Okay, here we go. I had to check and see if this was a parody account, but no. Good luck with that revolution, guys. Once you make sure everyone involved is morally pure and agrees with you 100% on everything, I'm sure it will take off. Hmm. No, it's not light mode. It's light mode because it's in, it's in, um, it's here. Okay. Had to check and see. Okay. And then... There was a response to this one. Absolute numpty take again. 
Destiny advocated shooting BLM protesters. He defends saying the N-word. He might be great to bring along to your game server, but he's nothing but a liability in real-world Atlanta. No one has time for this very online bullshit. Leave the IRL DSAs alone. Now, I do agree that there is a problem with moral, like, purity policing. However, we have to determine, we have to determine whether this is a fair claim. So let's read Christiosity's stream, or thing here, okay? You do not know anything about real world practice. Have you ever done it ever? No, right? So bugger off, let those who know what their people in their local area need and want, what they do not need or want, do what they do. Stop lecturing and insulting real leftists. Okay, I don't agree with this part, I don't agree with the stop lecturing and insulting real leftists. I think that's a very silly thing to say. That is very purity testing. I don't care if you want to make your videos and do whatever you like. I don't care if you call yourself a leftist or whatever you want. But you don't know theory and you don't know practice. And your wonderful years and hate groups don't provide applicable lessons here. Also, a bit of a low blow. I don't think that's a very good one. As someone who spent last week in registering voters in GA alongside someone with a Pete Buttigieg sticker and another person with a DSA pin destiny needs to get over himself. There we go. That's okay. Speaking as someone who's actually met Destiny IRL, he's not an IRL liability. He's actually really nice and polite IRL. I agree. However, though, I, I listen. I have I I would I've never met him in real life, but I would be willing to bet he's very polite and very kind. Um. However, though, we can't pretend, we cannot pretend that Destiny's IRL kindness is capable of distancing him from his online takes. Remember, so here's the thing. What's the take? We're going to get there. We're going to get the take. I tweeted this earlier. Join a union just so you can say, fuck you, I am, to people who purity test based on IRL organizing side effects. Include you end up IRL organizing in your community fit community benefits from your spite spite listen there's a lot of ways we're going to talk about a lot of ways to do practice praxis but we got to address this and i'm again drama mama segment so i'm going to try to be as fair as possible to get to the bottom of it before i give my final take on all of the drama okay does shu have a point about moral purity i think yes there is some problems with with purity testing however Christiosity also has a point in that it's not just a matter of purity testing. It's the fact that Destiny's brand, Destiny's brand is deeply associated with multiple layers of radioactive takes. The N-word Andy saga, which is now a little bit in the past, people have forgotten about it a little bit, but also the most recent take is pretty rough. He's a liability in regards to being associated with actual networks and candidates by name, but he can help by bringing people together and he can stick to that. I agree. I agree. You haven't forgotten the N-word Andy saga? Me neither. Um, the fact of the matter is that it is not whether Destiny himself is good, is a good canvasser. I imagine Destiny would... I'm dead serious here. I'm not just being nice. I genuinely believe Destiny would probably be a fantastic fantastic canvasser seriously uh i think he would be really good personally but the fact of the matter is that his brand is totally toxic so what he could do now here's the suggestion for destiny what he could do is he could canvas under a pseudonym and only let in channels on his channel on his d discord know that it's him doing it so that he gets the benefit of his audience, but is di is working under a pseudonym so that the toxicity of his brand doesn't prevent his I IRL efficacy. Now that would be the big brain, real politic take, but that's not what's happening. That's, wait, it would be easy to do that. People do that all the time. It's not a conspiracy. People use pseudonyms all the time. Are you kidding me? There are sex workers who use a pseudonym where they do sex work so that they can do real, wor real world other stuff without being harassed. Now, sometimes it can backfire, but it it's a lot it's a lot harder when it goes that when it goes that far in. They have to do a lot of work to dig that out and to find it out and to prove it to people. It's not just Destiny is working with the DSA is working with Reverend Warnock. Here's this extremely clippable 
clip and there goes the campaign instead they'd have to be they'd have the, the republicans would have to find a way to sell people on the idea that x person doing canvassing with the dsa is secretly destiny it won't work you can't make a hate campaign nearly as easily as just having that really spicy clip that that makes people angry that clip i'm sorry anybody can feel otherwise is objectively as far as i'm concerned radioactive no one i don't think anyone could make a case that that clip is not radioactive if purdue fans saw the n-word saga they'd back destiny i hate this day well maybe maybe but then he can't stroke his own ego yes that's another problem it won't benefit his brand at all and he doesn't get to claim what he usually refers to as woke points he won't be able to farm those with other lefties online. I'm sorry, but he says that all the time. That's what it is. Do it like like making a big deal about you doing canvassing is farming woke points to a certain degree. And it's okay. Farming woke points is fine. I think people deserve some woke points for the things that they do, but it is what it is. Let's be let's be consistent here. But the debt, but the drama isn't over yet. It's still not over. Hi, I've spent years doing IRL praxis, among others doing organizing, working with the Socialist Communist Party here, founded and manage a co-op and have brought a ton of average people into left politics. Shoe on head is right. Based Dario easy to spot people who have IRL experience from the extremely online. This is the most moronic, self-absorbed, holier-than-thou gatekeeping I've ever seen. That's from wet-ass pogfish with the neoliberal thing. Listen. I do believe, I do very, very much believe that Dario has done, in fact, I, I'd be willing to, to, to bet on it. I'd be willing to bet that, um, that Dario has done IRL praxis, done organizing, and worked with the Socialist Communist Party in his country. Yes, he's a Twitch streamer. Or they're a Twitch streamer. I think they go by they, them. Uh, oh, none listed. No pronouns listed. Okay. Well, Dario, I do believe, has done IRL organizing. I know that Dario participates in a co-op. Yeah. But I also know that Dario is very biased towards Destiny. Dario is a big Destiny fan, and he defends Destiny very, very frequently. With all due respect to Dario. With all due respect to Dario. But the fact of the matter is that I don't think that I don't think his argument holds up here, even with his experience. And claiming experience is not an argument. With all due respect to Dario. Saying he's done it before doesn't mean that he's right about or they're right about this specific thing. Do you see what I mean? Because guess what? You might have done organizing in your um, in your space, but in our space, it might be totally different to bring on somebody whose brand is toxic, even if you like that person, even if you think that person is good. Hmm. Cotton D-pad, that's a little weird. It's an anecdote. Yeah, it is silent. It absolutely is. So, at long last, we have reached the tail end of the drama, at least for now. Let's check in and see if um, if there's been any updated tweets since then. Let, let's find out. Okay. Hmm. Oh, okay, so he's fighting with a lot of people online right now. Destiny's fighting with a lot of people online. I'm sorry, but this also, this take right here is also dishonest. Two groups of people in the U.S. who don't differentiate between rioters and peaceful protesters, Republicans and socialists. I'm sorry, but no one who hears that take is going to come to that conclusion. No one is going to come to that conclusion. I'm sorry, no one is going to come to that conclusion. I know he's referencing that he said like pre 
I mean, look, we can go and watch the fucking original take. Do we need to do it again? Oh, wait a minute. Oops, I was wrong. The drama's not done because this one. Is Destiny the first streamer to organize direct political actions like this? Okay. I love you, Kurt. I love you, Kurt, who runs the Twitch debate one. This is so silly. This is the most Destiny-blinded statement I've ever seen. I'm sorry. You need to take off the Destiny glasses. I'm so sorry. The, the Destiny glasses have got to come off for this. Is Destiny the first streamer to organize direct political actions? My socialist candidate streams all of her political actions. She's not a streamer, but the socialist who's elected to office here in Seattle literally streams everything that she does. That is a cringe take. And I love you, Kurt. Don't take this the wrong way, but Jesus fucking Christ, that one could have used a little bit more workshopping before you sent it out. Not only do we also exist in a space where Dylan Burns, who is in politics, literally a politician, touring news, thousands, of, I mean, uh, let me just think of tons of people, Lottie Blix. I know people don't love, like in Destiny Sphere, don't love Lottie Blix, but Lottie Blix has literally gone to water defender, land defender protests. What does Dylan actually do? Dylan is a foreign policy advisor for, I think, two or three different um, um, candidates and representatives. He um, also works for a couple of um, policy um, policy think tanks. Yeah, look, even Lottie Blix is Lottie Blix is even right here. Like Lottie Blix, they've they've gone and done that. Delete this tweet. That's so silly. This is this is very silly. This is incre incredibly silly. Yeah. Okay. So now we've done it. Does everyone think, okay, is there any questions or lingering concerns that anybody wants to bring up before I give my overall biased take, my personal take after having reviewed the entire drama? Yes, I agree with you, Posadas John. It's very, very, but again, regardless of the context, can I do a land back explanation? I can. Does purity even matter in this election? I don't think it does. I don't know. I don't know, Toasteds. Because I don't think that he thinks about his audience in that way. Why must the left fight? We don't know if the official DSA account didn't DM Destiny saying, sorry, but I but we had to publicly disavow you. Okay, let me check in with this real quick. Okay, so we've got the DSA. We've got our DSA friend on hand here right now. The Atlanta chapter of the DSA. Yeah, I think this is a smaller a smaller segment, but don't worry. We have some questions. Are you sure not, you're not just taking a, a leaf from Destiny's book by critiquing this? Probably true, Windleby. Why must the left fight? Well, that's because there's a lot of diverse opinions on the left, unlike on the right. Um, lame of the DSA to refuse to canvas with the man who invented political canvassing. True, silent. All right, let's see. All right, we're going to have, um, we're going to have on Harry from YDSA GT and MADSA member. What? Give me one second. So be ready, be ready for your questions that I can direct at this DSA member who is largely involved in this.
Give me just one second here real quick. Do they have an official Twitter? I'm pretty sure that's the one, but we'll talk about it. This is going to be a stream chat. Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Let me just get this up here. You're very welcome. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best to do this shit responsibly. Okay? All right. Let's get this up here. We're going to call in and have him on right now. Let's do this. This is talking about the drama, and we'll also talk about the um, the runoff as well. Hello. Hey. Hello, Harry. This is Demon Mama. All right. Oh, I can get you up on screen. Give me just one second here um, cool. to get your camera up. Uh, let me see here. Where is my camera? Here, let me, I'm going to grab a cord for my phone real quick. Let's see here. All right. Yeah, yeah, no worries. We will have you uh, on here to, to talk with us. Here, let's see. Here. All right, actually, I... it's in my car, so I'll use two okay. seconds. Yeah, no worries. Take your time. I can I can cover this for the time being, so you don't have to be seen on stream. Cool. We've been talking about this. Um, basically, uh, so I don't. I, I'm sure you're not familiar. I'm a pretty small streamer, but um, all things considered, in the big scale of things, um, but I have a pretty passionate community. We talk about lefty politics, and occasionally we do these little segments um, called. Uh, drama mama investigations where when there's big drama online on twitter in in lefty spaces in twitch and youtube etc we dig in and we try to figure out and get to the bottom of it and give people some perspective and also when opportunities like this come up you know we try to give the opportunity of people to defend themselves etc etc um so just so awesome. you yeah, are aware um, of what you're stepping it may, be, it may be a little bit more uh banal than uh twitter had you believe but oh that's fine <laughs> we read um we read the thread um by let's see may have even been i don't know if it was you who published this thread but let me just bring up the thread real quick it was um the thread by Wonk wonking class yep. um we read that one we also read the tweet we went over the tweet by metro atlanta dsa the account that um accused um or that they claimed that the nazi claim you know what i mean we went over that we've watched the original um clip that was associated etc cetera, etc cetera. so um you know we've 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 gone over quite a lot of it in this little segment but you know we want to make sure we get a clear picture of what's going on um let me just bring you back up on the screen here and let me just adjust this real quick how do i do this what's the easiest way to do this uh let's see here um do you want to just give me a quick test so we can make sure we can hear you fine? Test, test. All right, that's fine. Perfect. Perfect. Um, one thing, we're getting a small echo, so you might want to mute the stream. You should be able to hear me through Discord. Um, okay, I just closed up the stream. Uh, is there still an echo? Uh, no, not that I can cool. hear. No, that sounds perfect. Let me just adjust this real quick um, to just make sure that we've got the best image possible okay great so we have all right so uh if you'd like to introduce yourself to the stream there are currently just so you're in the know uh about 200 people watching right now so you got a pretty big audience right now so you know cool cool well hey people um my name is harry um using he, he him pronouns uh, i am co-chair of ydsagt young democratic socialist socialists of america at georgia tech um, and I'm also a, uh, member of Madza and pretty involved in Madza. Okay. Uh, and I also, uh, I also do a lot of canvassing. Um, that's where I came from right now. Um, I'm doing that through a union right now. So that's Fantastic. why I can talk for now. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, um, good on you for all that. We have talked about the, uh, Georgia runoff election pretty significantly on this stream. It's, um, something I try to focus on. Although there's been a lot of uh, other things going on, but but yeah, we talk about this sort of stuff frequently. I've, um, in fact, recently just encouraged all of my Georgia viewers to uh, go register today, as I understand it's the last day to register. Is that correct? Yep. Um, and uh, if you are interested in canvassing, 
Um, you can reach out to to me. You can reach out to uh, the YDSAGT Twitter. You can reach out to the Mads of Twitter. Um, any of those will, will work, and we are about to have um, more uh, frameworks uh, to plug more people in. So if, if you want to do it, we'll have space for you. So, yeah. Fantastic. So there you go. Everyone, I have your socials up on the screen. So if you're interested in that, this is where you can start. This is where you can do that sweet, sweet praxis pushing <laughs> things left in this country. Um, so, so yeah. So why don't you, uh, if you're cool and comfortable with it, can you give us your side and your experience with this whole thing that's happened? I recognize things have gotten very spicy online, as we call it in the biz. Um, there's been a lot of heat, a lot of spice going on, a lot of back and forth. I know we watched Destiny's response, um, in which he alleged. Uh, I'll, I'll say that I actually have not seen his response, okay. so I can't really comment on that. That's fair. Um, yeah, um, that's fair. Uh, it was it was kind of harsh. I'm not gonna lie, but um, but you know that's his style. He tends to be that way a little bit. Um, I recently had a yeah. debate with the guy uh, this last week, and that was very uh, really? yeah, yeah. We were talking about uh, responsible Twitter usage. Interestingly, <laughs> um, interesting. <laughs> yeah, interesting that this should all happen. Um, mm. But yeah, so why don't you give us your just overall take on it, what you'd like to say about it, and then we'll get into questions and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. So um, I jotted down like some. I'm just gonna pull those up so I can um, go through it easier. Okay, so um, this all started when uh, I was um, helping a, a SCAD student. Um, okay. I will just call her O. Um, get a YDSA SCAD going. Okay, what's um, a SCAD for viewers? SCAD, oh, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design. Okay, so, so that's a, another college that you're trying to get a chapter set up at. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I was I was trying to get a YDSA set up at SCAD, and so Olivia or fuck, it's okay. <laughs> okay, um, you don't know her last name, so yep, that's fine. Uh, don't worry about it. Just try so, not to dox yourself. <laughs> Just stick with yeah. first names. <laughs> um, so she uh, watches Destiny and um, went to a canvassing event um, with uh, the Destiny was hosting. There were like some Vosh people there and also some okay. Destiny people there. Sick. Um. And we, while she, we have a lot of overlap with the Vosh community, uh, for f just so you are aware of what what biases may exist in my chat and whatnot, we have a lot of people um, involved. Like, we, there's a lot of overlap between us. I kind of got my start in Vosh's community, but go on. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I'm I'm actually a Vosh fan as well. Um, so uh, at at the Destiny event, um, O uh, met somebody named Doug of CA, and okay. uh, Doug of CA. Um, they exchange contact info, and then Doug of CA hit me up okay. um, to do an in-person um, canvassing, like, uh, hype event, basically. Like, you would just come and get, like, food and, like, listen to music, I guess. And okay. then uh, from there, you would get signed up for canvassing. Um, and I was, uh, you know, uh, I was already, like, very skeptical of this working out. Um, for one, we're in finals right now. Yep. Um, pe people are not really going to want to come to an in-person event um, right now. Uh, and a lot of people aren't even on campus. Um, so, yeah, that would be a reason why it wouldn't work out. Um, also, you know, with COVID, I mean, like, having an in-person event, like, with food um, doesn't sound entirely safe. That's right. Um, and, um, you know, I also uh, was upfront about the fact that uh, Destiny does not have a good reputation among the left, and that um, optically it may be a bad thing to do that. Okay. Um, and, you know, it would really just come down to do we feel that this is going to uh, build working class power? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so that conversation happened on November 28th. Um, on November 29th, I told Doug that we would be in a meeting the next day. Okay. Um, on the next day, we had the meeting and we decided against it. And then on the first of the the next month, so that's one day after um, the meeting, I texted Doug, Doug and um, told him uh, that we decided against it um, and apologized for the delay because I meant to hit him up that day and then um, just wished him luck on his endeavors. And, you know, I thought that was going to be it. Um, then he kept pushing. Um, okay. He wanted to do the event really hard. Um, and... Uh, you know, since I'm I'm co-chair of YDSA GT, I can't really speak for other YDSAs um, or Madza. Um, mm -hmm. So I gave him uh, uh, 
wonking class is contact info. Um, and what because... is their, like, where do they stand in the, in the organization? Just if, if that's okay for you to talk about, like what, wh how can we, yeah. you know, contextualize where they, what their, you know, influence is? Yeah, for sure. So, um, M is, or he's, uh, he's, he started YDS AGT. Okay. Um, he is the state YDSA coordinator. Um, and he is a prominent member of MADSA. Okay. Um, and so I thought that, that that would be the perfect person to connect uh, him with because, you know, no matter what, you know, they decided on doing, uh, this person would be a good person to talk to about it. That sounds, that sounds like a very, you know, prudent judgment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, um, and, uh, brought it to the steering committee in MADSA. Um, yeah, he, he told me we had a phone call after the conversation. He said that um, he was, you know, also pretty skeptical of it working out. Okay. But he brought it to Madza, and they promptly turned him down. I don't know what the exact time frame is for that, but okay. they uh, it. I I heard that you know Destiny claimed it was like weeks. That is definitely not true. Um, if he did say that, um, it you know the course of my communication was like three days, and um, the course of you know their communication uh couldn't have been more than more than a couple of days um yeah because we're not and, weeks into de uh, into december yet so that timeline wouldn't really my line up in my opinion <laughs> yeah so um then uh from there um you know i i guess the next big thing would be destiny having uh his stream um and uh then the next day i or well, I think that was I think the stream was yesterday, wasn't it? I believe so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the next morning, I wake up to a uh, total shitstorm on Twitter. Okay. Um, That's what we've and... been talking about. That's what brought it to our attention over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so lots of lots of very misinformed people uh, thinking that um, you know we were just like oh fuck canvassing we're not gonna we're not gonna canvas like Ossoff is a lib um, when that was not the case uh, we I mean like. Even though that I, you know, I disagree with Destiny on a lot of things, we we gave him, you know, a fair shot and like talked about it. We just decided against it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, then um, from there, I know that like Voss jumped in, Shu jumped in, um, and uh, lots of people were accusing us of being like ideological purists. Mm -hmm. When uh, I mean. It, it's just it doesn't make sense for you to work with somebody who believes that like it's a good thing for you to be shot yeah um you know i, I mean I, I don't i'm not a huge destiny watcher so mm -hmm. i i can't you know tell you if that clip is like completely out of context or whatever but it didn't seem out of context to me um it seemed like that would create a hostile working environment and that no uh professional person would would put those people together it just doesn't make any sense um so yeah i mean like lots of people are cu accusing us of being ideological purists okay. and like um yeah from there uh i had uh a brief conversation with uh vosh okay um he was making some tweets um you know shitting on dsa as a whole and stuff um i don't I don't want to reveal too much of that conversation because it wasn't on stream or anything. That's perfect. Um, but basically, um, he was just saying that, uh, you know, um, his tweets are as they stand and that, um, that, uh, that, um, you know, we, basically that we were being, um, ideological purists, like just not wanting to, uh, work with people just because we don't like them. Um, and then, um, oh, uh, I'll go to the, uh, to the Nazi tweet because that's okay. probably something that people are uh, excited to hear about. Well, yeah, that was one <laughs> where, um, I was a little surprised to see that that was put out. I don't know if that's, a, we, we weren't able to confirm that that's an official account or anything along those lines. Um, but yeah, it was certainly, it was certainly one where I didn't understand the motivation behind that. Um, and I can I can expand into what like my takeaway was after doing all of the you know research that I did and whatnot. Um, but I certainly I certainly felt that may have been a bit um, a bit overzealous, perhaps is a way to describe it. But if you have some context to provide, that'd be fantastic. 
Yeah. So, um, so Madza is, um, it's, you know, a member driven org. We don't have like a social media team. Okay. We don't have like, uh, you know, hundreds of fans that are just willing to do our social media stuff for us. Fair. Um, you know, we usually have one person uh, controlling the Twitter and then one person helping out with that. Okay. Um, and uh, that tweet was made by uh, one person, to my knowledge. And I was personally very against that happening. Um, I saw it and I was, you know, very pissed off that that happened. Um, we, uh, you know, w- uh, we all agreed at YDSA that that was um, definitely overzealous, definitely... Um, I mean, I just don't think Destiny's a Nazi, so right. Um, I, it's I, a big ac- it's a big accusation, and um, yeah. yeah. Do you think that there's any um, chance of that, like an apology being issued for that sort of tweet, or it being taken down, or something along those lines? Um, because yeah. I do feel like that might be a um, a sort of thorn in the side of this whole the the PR fallout of this. Uh, be- at least from what I can, um, at least from what I can tell, and and again, this is where I'm going to go into my take a little bit. I tend to agree with what you stated earlier that like the clip that is very heavily associated with Destiny, like it or not, context or not, regardless, is something that could be dangerous for Oppo, could be dangerous for people who don't feel comfortable working with people who are associated with that. I completely understand that from a just a sheer perspective of like how do we do real politics? How do you make um, you know, progress on this. But I do have to say, I don't know that it makes it much better to, um, I don't know if it improves the situation to have a tweet like that, um, you know, accusing someone of of n- being a Nazi, which is a pretty huge accusation, you know, on in That's public. Crazy. Yeah, and I can understand mm-hmm. to a certain degree why Destiny and his fan base would have a negative response to that sort of um, take. Um, just Well, so I will I'm... say that the, that the negative response didn't start with that take. It, it started with, with completely inoc- like just benign um, just conversation where it was just like, hey, do you want to do this thing? Mm-hmm. No, we, we're okay. Um, yeah. And so that's when the negati- negativity started. It wasn't because of that tweet. Fair. Yeah, it looks like, um, at least on the timeline I'm looking at here, that tweet was only made about, um, you know, that, that tweet was only made about nine hours ago. So this would be well, as far as I can tell, well after Destiny um, voiced his what I would consider to be rather uncharitable um, read of the DSA in general, as um, I think the words that he used were um, white suburban socialists who hate everyone who's not a communist, Um, which to me just seems, that seems a little bit like not what you would want to say if you were genuinely trying to work with someone. But all of that aside, it does seem to me that that's an escalation and not necessarily um, in the correct direction. So do you think there's any chance of that tweet being like revoked or anything like that in the name of uh, moving forward uh, in, you know, towards the vic- towards victory in Georgia? So um, I personally would like to see it removed. Um, mm-hmm. And I've already uh, reached out um, like uh, exec um, in YDSAGT uh, discussed it and we, draft out an email together to the MADS, a steering committee, basically talking about how irresponsible that was and how it uh, reflects poorly on MADSA, DSA, us, um, and, you know, our coalition. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I personally, I would, I would like to see it taken down. Um, and I can't really tell you whether that's going to happen or not. Um, that's going to have to be something that, like, they discuss. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm I, I would I, I'm not I'm not really sure of the likelihood either um, because uh, it, it like there isn't really any reason for us to to be charitable to him right now uh, he hasn't been charitable to us and we True. don't really see any benefit um, in working with him right now um, I'm like uh, people people on mine were talking about oh like I can't believe you, t- you turned down destiny he could have like you know brought you to the fucking stratosphere like we we have we have our own people we have you know a reputation we we can get people um D- destiny can get his people but i don't see how collaborating together is going to bring in more people than we would have separately right and um, and that was something that i brought up you know during my segment sort of talking about um like 
like canvassers like do a lot of good work and there's a lot of canvassers that go thankless thousands of canvassers that go thankless destiny bringing a hundred might or whatever approximately might not be worth it for the organization to risk the radioactive take and does that yeah. sound like the sort of rationale that's being used by the dsa as far as you're concerned yeah so destiny's going to do his thing either way he's already um on it um so he's going to use his influence to bring in people yep. i don't understand like I don't think that there's going to be any segment of people that is like, oh, I wasn't going to canvas, but now that that YDSA and Destiny are working together, now now I really want to do it. Yeah, um, that just doesn't really seem like a likely scenario to me. Yeah, and I don't I don't necessarily. Another thing that I noticed is that from a pure again from my external sort of Machiavellian, how do we win in Georgia? How do we bring you know advance the left? I don't see how there's like. Um, any negative that comes from just both people working besides the fact that maybe the Destiny folks won't have access to your voter databases or whatever that they wanted access to, which might be a little bit of a setback for them, but nonetheless, it's still 100 people is still 100 people as far as I can say. And and just so we have a, like, and maybe you can't answer this, but just so we have a sort of scope, um, if you're able to answer this sort of question, if you can't, don't worry about it, but um, what's the sort of like canvassing team that you would, would tend to expect for this type of an election? Like how many people do you think you can get out on the ground? Cause I know that destiny was saying he had between anywhere between like a hundred to 150 people on his team, on his push. How many, like, and I, again, I know if you can't reveal this sort of information, that's fine. But if you can, do you have any idea of the scope, even if you could just ballpark it so we can compare and see and like, you know, get some truth to this situation. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, in YDSAGT, um, we, uh, on a lot of our canvases, we average around, like, 25-ish people, which, I mean, for for a university, like, that, that's pretty solid. Um, like, we're, we're one of the biggest uh, YDSAs in the country, like, in a red state. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I'm pretty happy with that number. And we also uh, send people to, to canvas um, with uh, unions, um, especially Unite Here. Um, we do a lot of work with them. Um, uh, Madza is also doing canvassing, and I think that they got like um, like 30 people out last time. Uh, and then we've got other YDSAs in the state doing it. Um, but it's it's not necessarily about the 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 difference in the number of canvassers. Mm -hmm. It's just like are more are more people going to join because we're working together, and is that going to be so many people that it outweighs? The consequences of working with destiny that's fair so what think, it sounds like, like that can that can that sorry that no. can in, that can hinder our uh, our further organizing that's, like that's this fair. this race is super important but we have we have a lot of issues that are super important we have to like you know we have to have people on campus and around the atlanta area feeling that we are working for them for them to come and want to work with us mm -hmm. on things like uh, like COVID around our school, we've got you know like uh, our school um, uh, uh, owes like some military housing uh, contractor um, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, and so that's why they like brought us back to school. We're trying to fight stuff like that right now. Like the Senate race is important, but we need those. We need people that that believe in us and trust us. Love your uh, nail polish, by the way. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Um, so, what, what, what should I call you by, by the way? Oh, you name? can just call me Demon Mama or Mama or whatever. That's just the name okay. I go by online. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so it sounds like that in raw numbers, Destiny would be able to bring a lot of people and, and perhaps make a lot of good use of that. But there is, and I acknowledge, and I think, I think through my coverage here, I think we've, we've been able to establish that there is definitely a very big PR risk, especially given that, um, it, it appears that the, um, mad, mad, Madsa, Madsa. um, sorry, I, I, I stumble over the acronym, but the Madsa, no um, people also with no familiar, with no familiarity with destiny did encounter this, this hot take, this really nuclear hot take, which again, I have no comment on the actual context on it in the scope of this conversation. I have my own thoughts about it. I gave my take back when it happened, et cetera, et cetera. But for the purposes of this, regardless of whether it's in 
context or not, it, it is clearly something that's very risky. And I can understand that completely. Um, right. And the, I, think that, I think that the fallout mm -hmm. um, of this kind of vindicates us uh, in that he wasn't really a good coalition partner. Uh, at a drop of a pin, like he was willing to throw us all under the bus and like talk shit on stream about us. Yeah. Um, it, when, I mean, at that point, we had done nothing to him whatsoever. Yeah, and I, I do think that there's some concerns with that, right? Because um, c the way that I see it is coalition building is a two-way street. You have to both be willing to coalesce in order to build a coalition. And I will say that the the stream that I saw was very was very uncharitable. Um, and again, this is something that I personally have a critique of my, my, you know, my personal critique of Destiny is that he's very willing to go off the cuff broadcasting to an incredible audience his unfiltered takes without actually thinking about what the impact is. And that is really, that can be a huge liability in a um, tight election, in a tight politics, like real politics sense, um, you know, in something that's as close as this. Um, and, uh, you know, it does seem like that would be a hindrance to being able to coalition build. If, if, if coalition building is only a one-way street, it's not really a coalition. Um, so the other question I had, just to, again, I want to try and build the, the, the context that we have here. Do you think that, um, like, like, what is your read of the state of, like, the canvassing effort on Destiny's side? Like, do you think there's a lot of training that's required? Do you think that they're largely, like, they have some experienced people in there that are doing the training? Or was this something where they were hoping to have a lot of help from your organization in getting these people up to speed? Um... Uh, I mean, I, uh, I'm not really sure because we didn't get to like that stage of, um, what we needed now. I mean, if, if Doug of CA or destiny had reached out and said, um, you know, Hey, uh, sorry, it didn't work out. Um, but, uh, it would really help us if you could, um, you know, give us a uh, list or if we could send uh, some of our people to one of your trainings. Um, those things would have been perfectly fine with us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and in the DMs, it looked like that was the case. It does look like, um, like at least on the part of your organizations, um, it was attempted. Like, hey, like we're not, we don't want to like have you speak at our events. We don't want to have you, um, you know, publicly associated. But if you send your people over to us, we'll get them, you know, street ready to go canvas. Yeah, definitely. Um, we have we have the framework to do that. Um, also, Unite Here has the framework to do that. So if there was an overflow, we could send them there. Um, we we could have uh, you know I mean like there are things that we could have done together even even though that this one unsafe in person event during finals that they wanted to happen in like a week didn't happen. Okay. So is would you say then that like the um, and again. If this isn't an accurate reading of, of what of what your experience with the event is, feel free to tell me I'm wrong. Um, but do you would you say that it's sort of a multi factor um, decision that came from a mixture of PR risks and lack of like a proper timing with regards to the to the um, pandemic, both the pandemic and the finals week thing that probably was what sold this down as opposed to just like any sort of purity politics or anything like that. Yeah, so, I mean, like, for me, like, I wasn't even really, uh, against, I wasn't even entirely against it um, for the political, like, for the PR stuff. Like, you know, when I, when I brought it to exec, um, basically my thing was, um, uh, we need to judge this based on whether or not it's going to build working class power. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, like, the logistics, um, you know, uh, were a reason why it you know, wouldn't work out well. Um, but ultimately, we just didn't see the, uh, the, the the benefit in it. And th there were a lot of risks, uh, you know, doing it in person, like trying to do that big. Of, we, I mean, we haven't, um, like, we, we don't know how many people would have shown up. We, we're not even sure if we could, um, you know, work with, like, I mean, like, there would be there would be a lot of considerations, uh, and they just kind of wanted to move it along. They were just like like they they almost seemed like uh, a little bit annoyed that like I was even like wanting like details, um, you know like they, they 
they were like, oh, no, no, it's going to be fine. Like, I mean, it's not necessarily going to be fine. We have tons of students that have gotten COVID. You know, like, I mean, I've had, you know, multiple family members die um, during this. Very sorry to hear that. Um, thank you. Like, but, th- like, they're, you know, it's it's not just like, like, oh, you know, you just don't want to do it. There are, there are a multitude of reasons why, it, why, you know, the benefit would need to be big for us to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and as a follow-up question, just so that at least, and, and I don't know, again, what, what level you can actually speak to this, but um, just so that we have something on the record, maybe, and again, you can decline if this is not within your purview, but do, does, in general, the YDSA and the DSA at large, are they generally willing to work with capitalists so long as the causes are in a line? Are you willing to work with, um, you know, people who aren't particularly far left, maybe even centrists and stuff like that, so long as your goals are aligned? Is that something that you generally do and are willing to engage in? Um, generally, I would say no, just because we haven't really, we haven't gotten a lot of uh, reasons to, to work with people like that. Like, Fair. but now if if there was uh like it, you know if we were talking about like drug legalization or something like that mm-hmm. i would work with libertarian okay like i'm 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 interested in building working class power i'm not like and the pr stuff comes into that but i'm not really interested in like twitter feuds and all of that That's i'm fair. interested in making sure that we can like secure a good future you all leave the twitter feuds to me <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so so that's that's another reason why like it was kind of annoying just because i mean destiny is an incredibly online person yes that's like, true. like the power dynamic there of like sending you know your people at like you know a group of like a small group of organizers like you're i mean i i had to like on my on my whole lunch break today and like during like i had to take a break during canvassing for some of it to deal with this petty bullshit mm-hmm. like it's affecting work Okay, so see, that's something that was some, was another thing I wanted to ask about. And we're getting a little tight on time because I have a, a prior engagement coming up in about 30 minutes, but I do have a couple more questions I want to ask you just so we have a little timeline of what you can expect. Um, but like, cool. so have you all been like sort of inundated with attention? Um, again, this is something I personally have experienced having debated Destiny Live last week. Um, I was inundated with a lot of attention, more attention than I've ever had in my entire life. Um, and a lot of it was not particularly friendly. Um, is that something that your organization and your people involved in your organization have also experienced now that you've got so many eyes on it? Yeah. I mean, for me personally, I know I had multiple people, um, making like really, really mean comments, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, like I'm a, I'm a big boy and I can handle it, but like, you know, I mean like they're, they're getting like really personal with shit Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm just I'm just some college kid that wants to like try to try to make the world better if I can like and like I have you know a million people coming at me like like criticizing me for like the way I look and stuff over destiny like uh, over just an event not working out that seems very remarkably petty and remarkably counterproductive if you ask me and again that's my that's my sort of bias of course in that like I mean, I've heard all about this, but it sounds to me like inundating individual members of an organization you have a disagreement with is really counterproductive. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm lucky that I'm uh, fairly, you know, mentally like stable and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, like there are members of our organization that had that like harassment, you know, be or I'm not sure if harassment's the right word. I don't know if it classifies, but it had that attention directed at them. They would probably be in a really bad place right now. Okay. Well, I think that's all the questions I have for you. However, my chat has some questions for you if you're all right with fielding a few of those. Go for it. Okay, so the first one um, is from Somniostatic, a user who's a regular here. Um, What do you think of Vosh's take about purity testing, if you are familiar with it? Um, Can you you elaborate a little bit more? Um, Yeah. Hey, Somniostatic, do you have the specific take on hand? If you could get the take for us, we'll we'll follow up on that. Also, if um, anybody else can – if anybody else has questions right now that you want to drop, drop them in chat right now because then we'll get them to Harry before we finish this up. Um, um, I'm not sure. 
if you have a reference somniostatic that'd be great um i i could talk i could just briefly talk about in general my ideas on purity tests i guess sure um yeah i mean like i think that uh, it's a situational thing um if uh, like i mean it really just comes down to like uh, i mean like it, it would sometimes be a good idea to use a purity test because um the people who have certain ideas will act in certain ways okay. that aren't going to be uh, uh conducive to organizing but it's like but like really uh i mean it's it's all about that whether or not it we're going to be able to effectively organize with them okay so you would say that like something like um being able to to organize with people who don't have a fundamental belief in working class power would be very difficult to work with but maybe social democrats or you know even certain like like liberals who clearly have an interest in like union power or something like that would be people you could work with right i would i would feel comfortable working with uh people um soak soak dems or left and i would definitely uh also um be comfortable working with uh libertarians on specific issues and i would also be comfortable with working um, with Democrats, but only on things that build working class power. Okay, that's fair. All right, uh, another question. Um, how is canvassing going looking in these times? I think they're referring specifically, this is from Table Knife, is I think specifically with regard to the pandemic. Are there unique challenges that you're encountering? I imagine there are, but what, what are those? Yeah, so, um, I mean, one, one big challenge is that you'll get these um, far-right people occasionally that don't want to wear a mask and want to tell you about how the p pandemic is fake. Um, that's certainly a challenge. Um, uh, besides that, I mean, like, it, it changes the protocol a little bit. Like, um, you know, we, we are always wearing masks. We knock on the door and then we stand six feet back. Um, but uh, overall, I mean, canvassing is going very well right now. We have a lot of canvassers in YDSA. We have a lot of canvassers in MADSA. And Unite here is doing really amazing things right now. They are on track to hit um, a million uh, voters, I think. Uh, wow. Or I, I don't don't quote me on that. Yeah, that's I fine. Think that that's correct. Speculative. I think sure. that's correct. That's incredible. Um, yeah. So, uh, like for me personally, you know, I hit um, 105 today. Wow, that's incredible. So see. Yeah, it, I'm, it's it's really it's really power. great. I, it's, it's, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something we talk about on this stream frequently is that, you know, we may not have the money on the left, but we got people power like nobody can believe. Yeah. And after this pandemic, like in all the shit that's happened to me, I've just been so motivated to get out there. And also, I just I just love canvassing. Yeah. Like I just I, I, I bring I bring my skateboard and I just like skateboard door to door. And like I just talk to people about like, you know, why they should, you know, vote. I mean, like. We get to talk politics. I get to learn about why people believe things they do. It's it's really fun. That's awesome. That sounds like genuinely fantastic. So there you go. Yeah, Great so, answer. So uh, I'm going to use that to segue again into if you would like to canvas, um, hit me up, hit YDSHUT up, hit Madza up, any of those, and we will get you set up. Excellent. And then the other question is, uh, do you have any advice for starting a YDSA chapter on college campuses? And by the way, if you just have links to resources, I think that would also be great. We have a um, Praxis channel on my Discord that we fill with all kinds of stuff like that. So if you got it, let us know. You can DM it to me too if you'd like. Yeah, so um, since the, since I was just helping somebody get a YDSA started up, I, I will tell you a little bit about how that process goes. Okay. Um, first... Uh, first thing you want to do is probably create a logo because that's going to be on everything. You're, that's going to be on your your Twitter. That's going to be on your flyers. Everything you need is going to be uh, or is going to have a logo on it. So that's the first thing. Okay. Then from there, uh, you want to set up social media. You want to set up uh, a drive um, and have you know two different uh, like um, sections of the drive, like one for uh, private stuff, you know, exec stuff, um, and then one for public resources. Um, and then from there, um, you're just going to want to fly all over campus, pick, uh, you know, uh, pipe it up to your lefty friends, um, talk to other orgs that uh, are on campus. If there are any lefty orgs or if you have a college Dems um, group, um, that's going to be helpful um, okay. because there are some some people in college Dems that aren't really like, you know, uh, aligning with them, but are still in the club. 
Yeah. Um, and, uh, oh, and then uh, another thing. Um, after that, you're going to want to uh, get people in SGA. Get, um, you know, uh, run members through SGA. That's going to be super important in helping you um, get wins. Um, and uh, also, um, you want to do... Um, FOIA requests, you know what FOIA requests are? Yeah, or, freedom of information. Yeah. yeah, so those are super helpful. Like, um, you know, with, with the Georgia Tech thing where they were paying a military housing contractor or they, ha- they had to pay a military, mili- sorry, they had to pay off a military housing contractor because they built a dorm and Jesus. they sent kids to school because of that. Um, that so horrible. And we learned that through a Freedom of Information Act request. Wow, that's incredible. Um, and it was, real of, quick. it was one of our members who did it. So that, you know, that was, that was pretty awesome. Oh, that is actually amazing. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Um, I oh, missed the right. second the second step. I wanted to take a note of this so we can type this up in our Praxis channel. You said a logo, and then what was the second one? The third one was a drive. What was the second step? Um, get, just getting social media set up. Socials, um, okay. And um, if, if you're doing this, um, I want you to reach out to me directly um, because I will I will help you along the way at every step. And sorry, could I have your um, could I have your personal Twitter ad again if you're if you're comfortable with me having it up here? Because I have your YDSAGT, um, but I'd yeah. love to have um, the other one on there real quick if that's possible. Yeah. So I um, on Twitter I am Harry F four twenty sixty nine. Nice. All right. Well, you'll have a lot of uh, you'll have a lot of fans uh, uh, in on the left with that type of a name. Incredible. <laughs> so. Um, Let's take a look. There's another one here. Okay, uh, we have a question from Posadist John. Um, what are your feelings on the individual ownership of nuclear arms? Individual ownership of nuclear arms. Do you think? Um, do you think that every person should be armed with a personal nuclear device? And I, I and you don't have to answer this if you don't feel comfortable with it. I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say. Probably no. Um, I, I just I don't I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I you've I'm just lost the leftist. support of the Posadists. <laughs> I'm a pro gun leftist. I think that's we great. Should, you know, be allowed to you know own weapons, and I think that we need to uh, be um, purchasing weapons as leftists. Um, that's fair. But I nukes, um, you know, one crazy person can take out a whole city. So I'm gonna say no to that. Okay, perfect. Uh, let me just see if there's any more questions that I missed. Um. Excellent. Um, it looks like, yeah. Okay. So it looks like that was most of them. Oh, here, one last question. Cause then I got to get going after that, um, cool. to go to, I'm going to a, a big game with actually some of the people that we talked about tonight, shoe on head and Vosh and a couple of other people who've been somewhat involved in this drama. I'm actually going to go spend some time playing some video games with them on stream. So, cool. um, I'm sure they yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm sure I don't think we'll talk much politics, but, um, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the good news is that there's a lot of communication here. And I think most of these people genuinely, um, want you, uh, want you to succeed and also want the left to succeed and the working class to succeed. I know that's true for myself. Um, and I, 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 I can't really speak for anyone else personally, but from everything I know, one last question, if you live in a red area, how can organizing be done in places like that? Well, one thing that really helps is that um, we are in Atlanta. We're in the heart of Atlanta. Um, that, uh, you know, I mean, like, it's a completely different, I mean, it's, it's not like being in rural Georgia. Okay. Um, it's, it's a little bit more like being um, in the north. Um, but uh, I, would, uh, I would say just go hard against the administration. Um, you're going to get um, a lot of attention that way. It may, it, uh, it may not be the... Like it may not be good attention. We've got a lot of bad, bad attention doing that, but that still brings in people. Um, mm-hmm. The people that uh, you know, like, don't be afraid of uh, of you know of getting bad PR if you're uh, criticizing powerful people. That's fair. I would largely agree with that. Um, I think the term that some people would use, and maybe not all of us, but would be something along the lines of agitation. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Definitely. fantastic. Um, well, thank you so much. Real quick, before we say goodbye, um, can I get a trans rights from you? And also... Trans rights! Yeah! Can I also get a trans thriving from you? Because I'm trans, and it's very important to my community. I'm, I'm gender fluid. That's, that's great. Fantastic. Um, trans thriving. Look at that. 
we got it all. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for thank you for being willing to undergo this questioning. And I hope um, I hope you will walk away from this knowing that we all hope for your success, regardless of what fallout there has been. Oh, actually, there was one last thing that somebody suggested. This is a suggestion. I don't know if it'll be helpful, but perhaps if the tweet cannot be deleted, perhaps having the MD uh, or the MAD DSA account or MDUSA, I, sorry, I keep messing up the acronym, um, perhaps have them tweet out the timeline so at least there's some context, that might be something worth suggesting. Um, that's yeah, the concern so from that's... my community that I can I can see. Yeah, um, fair enough. Uh, you know, like I said, I disagree with, um, with the decision to post that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, right now I, I can't just, I, I can't give like much information about like about it. We, we have contacted them and, um, you know, we, we demanded like, you know, a, an explanation and like, you know, what they're going to be doing to uh, fix this going forward. Um, because we do uh, like, we do think that it's, it's bad to be having, you know, one person control the Twitter, especially when, you know, we get in drama. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that can be a little risky. It can, it can, uh, it can leave some doors open for personal drama to get in the way of the future of the organization or the the current objectives of the organization well harry right. thank you so very much for being willing to come on this has been a wonderful conversation um and please uh keep in mind if you ever have anything some major news out of georgia that you want to share with us just get just reach out to me um and we will do our best to get that word out for you whether by having you on or just by promoting the stuff in our discord we're getting a big growing community so a lot of people here are very very they're itching to get involved so yeah. Thank you so much. And I'll say one more time, if you're interested in canvassing, if you're interested in starting a YDSA, if you're interested in organizing in general, if you want to know other orgs that maybe fit with your ideology better, if you're not a fan of DSA, I can, you know, direct you to other orgs. I just want more people doing socialist organizing. Excellent. So hit me up. Don't hesitate. And that's what we want too. So thank you so much for coming on and uh, hopefully we'll hear from you soon. Bye. All right. Have a nice night. Bye. Incredible. That was incredible. Where's my Discord here? There we go. That was an incredible conversation. I was very happy to have that. Very, very happy. Make sure you give your follows. These are Harry's socials. Um, please, uh, here. Here we go. Blam. Go ahead and give Harry some follows. Um, and you know what? I think that we are ready for the final take on all of this situation. Are we ready to hear the takeaway? Um, are we ready? I think we've done quite a lot. How do you all feel? Do you not think I asked very good questions there? I think I did a good ass job. Yeah. You wait what? What do you mean you wait what? You wait what what? Oh, really? Okay, uh, send me that. Uh, if you could DM me that that link, Sylvia, we'll look at it later. Fantastic. That was fantastic. That was a great one. Um, let's see how YouTube. YouTube, how are you doing? Hello, YouTube. We are about to, uh, we're in just about 10 minutes. We're going to be going and playing some Among Us to wind down after all of the drama and investigations and, and heavy stuff. Um... Yeah, that was good. Um, I hope you're all doing well in YouTube chat. Don't forget, you can join the site chat. And please make sure you're subscribing and liking. I would deeply appreciate it. This entire thing. You can't get on the site? Elak, oh, that's weird. What's wrong with the, what's wrong with the site? Elak, what's wrong with the site? Oh, sniping your internet? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Let's do the final take. Okay, let's do the final take. All right. I think that this has been a very botched attempt at coalition building. Destiny has no fucking clue how to coalition build IRL. And this is not doing a very good job. I don't think Destiny is bad. I just think he's let the way that he engages on Twitter, the way that he engages on stream, totally obscure his approach to coalition building in, in IRL. Keep in mind, as, as we discussed, coalition building is a two-way street. 
You both have to be willing to work with one another. Thank you very much, M. Nelson. I do my best. I really appreciate that. Um, really do. Um, I feel like Destiny kind of fucked this up. However, I really feel like the M mad mad M A D S A needs to fix that tweet. That tweet is really not good. It is not a good look. Masta, Madsa, Madsa. Madsa needs to fix that tweet, in my opinion. And in fact, I don't do this very frequently. I don't do this very frequently. However, I think it would be actually worthwhile if we were able to comment on that tweet and say, hey, um, hey, this is not helping the coalition going forward. Um, I think that while there were serious issues in organization, this tweet is probably a little too far. Maybe we could um, actually make some progress for this and possibly mend the rift. So I I'm not going to advocate for everyone to go swarm the tweet, but kind, constructive feedback amid all of that hate might actually be worthwhile. So if you have it in you to tweet in response to that tweet that, um, you know, that there's some... Um, you know, yeah, keep it clean. We want to be helpful here. The goal, remember, the goal is strategic politics. We want the win. We don't want our egos in the way. So saying, hey, this seems like a little too far, imps, don't get in arguments. Don't do anything. Just say, hey, this, we prob this tweet probably was a little too far. That might be helpful. Again, no pressure, but if you feel the calling to do it, that might be helpful. I will probably do so later. Um, I mean, I did so on this stream. I expressed directly to the organization how I felt about it. Um, I think that was an incredibly useful conversation. Um, and I think that the takeaway from this is that people are way too terminally online to be able to separate the um, harsh realities of, on of real world politics and the dangers of engaging against Republicans who want to destroy you in the Senate and in the um, in the and in, in the House of Representatives, and we really oh yeah here you go, bam Discord. Um, and we really got to do better about that. We have got to check our egos at the door, really hardcore. Hopefully, this is one of those cases that Madsa can look back on to not mess up in the future, and Destiny can look at. And honestly, for once, self-reflect on his online dialogue for why an unknown org would feel he is associated that way, given his history and takes, especially since he tries very hard to be center-left. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that uh, I'm obviously a Destiny fan, but I think you made a really good case for Steven having a record that may damage the Senate race prospects, at least via working with the groups Harry is associated with. Yeah. And again, Nelson, keep in mind, keep in mind that he can still do what he wants to do. They just can't be publicly associated with him. And I think Destiny and his community should understand that and do this. That's what they should do. Did I hear about SCOTUS throwing out an anti-trans rights appeal today? I did not, but we will check on that after. We're about to go play some Among Us in about five minutes. And I want to just chill a little bit.